Hi, this is Simon Obstel and welcome to another tutorial for Resolve Fusion. And today I'd like to take a look at this interesting shatter effect. So let's get started on it. So the first thing I want to do is add a 3D shape. I'm going to switch it to sphere. Let's have a look at that. Let's load up our texture from the assets folder. So sphere texture, pipe that into the shape. And let's now with that 3D shape selected, add a 3D camera, which obviously creates a nice 3D merge there. After that, let's add a 3D renderer and look at that. So what we need to do is set up our camera. So what I like to do is I like to link my Z pivot to the Z translation. So let's do that. Right click, add expression to the Z, pick whip the Z translation, and just add a negative sign to the front of that pivot there. And I'm going to set this Z translation to 10. And the advantage of this is if we rotate the camera, we're rotating around the center of the scene. I just find that much more helpful. And if you like that, you can always come to settings and save default, and that will be your default camera setup. So I'm just going to make this scene a little bit more complicated by adding another couple of spheres in there. So I'm going to add a 3D transform, pipe my sphere into that, pipe the transform into the 3D merge, I'm going to set this transform scale to 0.75 and the X position to negative two. And I'm just going to copy that transform, command C, command V, pipe the shape into it, take the transform into the merge, and then set this new transform X position to two. So here is our scene, just a very basic thing. What I'm also going to do is add some lights Let's select the 3D merge. Let's add a three point light. Let's make it a little bit yellow by pulling down the blue. Let's actually turn on the lighting for this renderer so we can see what we're doing. So that point light, what we're gonna do is we're going to move it over negative three on X plus one on Y and two on Z. Actually, maybe make that even more yellow. Let's go for that, might be nice. So I'm going to copy that point light, control C, control V, and add it to the merge, come back to its position and set its X position to three and its Y position to negative one. Come back to the controls and let's make this a little bit blue like that. So we've got a nice color contrast there. What I might just do is I might come back to this shape, come into the specular and reduce that specular intensity down a little bit. And I'm also going to add in a background, take my renderer and drag it over the background to create a merge, come to my background. Let's switch the type to gradient and let's select the black, come to sort of here for the color, select the white. Let's make this something like that. It's just nicer if you've got something that's not completely flat. So the next thing to do is to look at actually creating this particle shatter. And to do that, we're going to take this 3D renderer and we're going to add a particle image emitter node. It needs a particle render node after that. And it also needs a 3D renderer after that. And we can take that 3D renderer into the merge there. Now, you'll notice that when we do that, it's all a little bit too far away. And that's because we need to add in a camera after this particle render node. So let's select it, add a 3D camera, which creates a new 3D merge. So what we need to do with this camera is we need to switch it to orthographic, and we just need to set its Z translation to something like one. Uh, it doesn't actually make any difference as long as it's greater than zero, you'll see something. Because the orthographic view is just a flat on view and that's really important for this. But the problem is it's all too far away. So to fix that, what we need to do is 
come into the controls for the orth orthographic camera and we need to set this scale to 3.555. And now it looks like that. And if we compare that with our original 3D renderer, they're the same. Don't ask me to explain that number. Uh, I'm sure there's a logic to it. I just, I just cannot for the life of me figure it out. So anyway, now what we've got is the image re-rendered as particles. So what the particle image emitter does is it renders a grid of particles. And that's much easier to see if we were actually just to reduce the density down to 0.5 and 0.5. And let's look at it over the merge. And you can very easily see that we've now got a grid of particles. And these being particles, we can do any kind of particle magic we want with them. I'm just going to increase that back up to one so you can see better. So what we can do is in here, before that particle render node, we can add in any kind of particle displacement that we want. And the simplest one is P turbulence. And if we now press play, you'll see that our spheres are getting distorted and then turning into this kind of swirl of particles. Now to get those particles to look a bit better, what I'm going to do is kind of come to this renderer here. And instead of the software renderer, I'm going to go with the hardware renderer. And I'm going to come down to the transparency and I'm going to use quick sort. So that's going to give us a slightly smoother result. Just to show you roughly where we are now, I'm going to right click on the playback button and I'm going to switch to 15 frames and I'm going to play from the beginning and we'll just sort of see every 15th frame and you're getting this effect. And what I also want to do is I want to add after this 3D renderer a brightness contrast node. And what I want to do with this is crank the gain up to two and the saturation up to two, just so we get some nice color. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'll come to, we're at frame 90, that's as good a place as any. Let's come to settings keyframe that blend value and come to the, I think, 40 frames and set that blend value to zero. So what I want to do with my particle turbulence, if we come back to here, is I want to keyframe it from frame 40 because I don't want it to start at the beginning. So I'm going to keyframe all these three and I'm going to come back one frame to frame 39 and I'm going to set these strengths down to zero. And what that means is that the turbulence is only going to kick in at frame 40. It gives us a little bit of a hold at the beginning. So the other thing I want to do is I come to this renderer here, the first renderer, just so we can see without having to generate this particle. Because the particles are going to be slow to, to render, so you're going to have to just be a little bit patient when you're setting all of this up if you want to see what's happening. So I'm just going to keyframe the wire rotation of the camera. So what I want to do is I want to set my play range to 239, so 10 seconds at 24 frames a second. And at the first frame, I'm going to add a keyframe on the Y rotation, set that to negative 30, come to the last frame, and set that to positive 30, just so we're sort of drifting around. And that's going to make it better because we're going to be animating the source of the, the particles. Now, don't forget that this is actually a 2D effect, but because we're using a scene that's sort of screaming 3D, it's actually going to look like a 3D effect. And the particle turbulence actually emits the particles in X, Y, and Z. So it's actually pushing them forward on Z, despite the fact that our source image is actually only 2D. And with that extra bit of rotation, it's going to look quite good. So the particles have just disappeared there. And that's because foolishly, I didn't set their lifespan. So let's set that to 240 so they're long enough. The other small detail I want to look at is the particle image emitter style. And by default, it's set to point, which is good because it's giving us effectively pixels. And I just want to turn on sub pixel rendered because it's actually going to make the effect just a little bit smoother. If we look at how that starts to break up, it breaks up much smoother because we've got that turned on. So if I turn off sub pixel rendered, you'll notice we've got 
that kind of latticing effect. We don't want that. Subpixel rendering is just going to make that all smoother, as you can see. So, as I say, we've been using particle turbulence to create this breakup effect. But what we could also do is use something else. So let's just turn off particle turbulence where we look at it. And let's add in here a particle gradient force. Drop that in there. And for the gradient, I'm going to use a fast noise. So I'm going to pipe that into the gradient force secondary input. And already you can see something is happening there. I'm going to set the detail up to eight, and then I'm going to set the scale down to one. And what you'll see is we're getting this really nice sort of noisy breakup that then as we go forward, creates this really gorgeous kind of paint splatter effect. And if I turn on discontinuous, takes a little bit of time to think about it, we get a very different sort of look from that gradient. So there's lots of different things you can throw into here as the particle gradient force. And you can also just turn the turbulence back on again and the two things will work together. Uh, the, the particle gradient force is only 2D, whereas if you add back in that particle turbulence, you're going to get it all uh, radiating out in 3D as well. So you can see there the effect of that gradient force that was starting right at the beginning, and our turbulence is starting to kick in now. The whole thing looks pretty gorgeous, I think. And if you wanted to keyframe that gradient force, again, you could just come to whichever frame you want, I can't remember what we did, and just keyframe that strength from zero up to 0.1. So anyway, I think I'll stop there. There's loads more that I could talk about and I've really only scratched the surface, but I think I've shown you enough so you can see the power of this idea. So anyway, thanks very much indeed for watching. I'll see you again soon.